There was an idea. Sure fucking hell there was an idea. And my my, look how that idea has grown. And now look how that idea has fallen. Alright, let's rewind back to a much more simpler, a civilized era, where ideas actually meant something, where inspirations weren't just carbon copies or replicating what's been achieved from another artist, where folks dressed in goofy costumes and made that shit look cool. And nope, I'm not talking about Star Wars. Ingenuity was fired from a cannon the moment it returned in a new creative light. Or shall I say, Hollywood's empire. Oh, by the way, I'm not even going to bother mentioning Disney being a major factor of the 10-year plan. This was all mapped out to be a 20-film story before Marvel even sold their soul to the mouse. Iron Man shot the idea out of the cannon and the Avengers stamped the plan as many consumers and audiences were hooked on. Out of the contrary, I wouldn't even consider Avengers as the transcendent for the MCU. To be a complete powerhouse at the box office and fan perception, we still had the folks seeing other films later on when an MCU film was competing with another hit during a box office week. Weekend War. I'd say 2014 Winter Soldier really transcended this IP to new heights with a much more darker spy thriller approach that many adored, and Russo is creating possibly the best choreographed film when it comes to hand to hand combat. Cause of Winter Soldier, MCU really was the talk of the town, not the film jester, like they've become right now, but the final boss from a Dark Souls game where films can only pray they can beat in the box office. After Ultron, Feige announced the final phase before the big fight with Josh Brolin's chin. This was probably the craziest reaction to a film announcement I have ever seen. Star Wars couldn't even accomplish that back in 2019. The original idea for this film was to be based off of Serpent Society, but changes early on led Marvel to adopt the famous Marvel comic Civil War. A fairly similar story just with differences such as the UN enforcing the cords instead of S.H.I.E.L.D. People were damn near excited. The trailers boomed YouTube channels, a lot of people were reacting. The inevitable for this film's success was mostly positive. Spider-Man grabbing the S.H.I.E.L.D., Black Panther's debut, and that one-shot tag team which had many an uproar of excitement. Film was a hit on all fronts, many still to this day consider it a top 3 MCU film, minimum top 5, and 8 years later, yeah, the movie still kicks a lot of ass, even better than before. Alright. You know, not a lot of films or franchises comment on the level of destruction an entire fight might have caused to many innocent lives involved, and repercussions not just for the villains but for the heroes who are tasked with avoiding such fates. With the lead up to the Civil War, we had countless cities environments with heavy population numbers ripped apart, and explosions. That is to say, in Age of Ultron, Sokovia was obliterated with the highest amount of casualties, imposing the UN to create the Accord to keep the Avengers in check. As Ross shows footages of how much collateral damage their powers are capable of. For the past four years, you've operated with unlimited power and no supervision. The opening scene kickstarting the entire discussion when Wanda, despite saving everyone in the zone, including Captain America, from the suicide bombing attempt Crossbones was measuring. But with good intent, her strength and carelessness led to a building in Lagos exploding, killing many innocents. This has wakened many nations to condemn the Avengers and have them in government control. So incidents like Lagos and Sokovia never occur again. You didn't finish! Speaking on Sokovia, the very city's destruction birthed the man whose will is to see the very team that were very much responsible as Ultron for the decimation. I can't physically throw up in my mouth. Zemo, former colonel of the Sokovian Armed Forces, lost his family in the battle embarking on his own mission as he has created a personal vendetta against the Avengers and wishes for their own destruction within. The events in this film have their own consequences as well, as the separation and crack within the team and Thanos conveniently pretty much saying, f*** it, I'm gonna do this shit on my own. He was able to pick apart each member at a time, killed Vision, and snapped his fingers and said Bond Voyage to half of the universe. In my culture, death is not the end. Civil War isn't just a Captain America film, but you could say it's somewhat of an Avengers minus Hulk and Thor film. 
as they're busy goofing off somewhere in space. But it certainly introduces two new characters we haven't seen before. Marvel did tease a potential arrival for Black Panther and Age of Ultron, but the biggest argument and worry would have been, will these characters like Spider-Man and Black Panther being late into the MCU, how much will Civil War cover and fit their characters into the story? Now for Spider-Man, I'll cover him later, cause he's the only complaint I really have, not for a character standpoint, but just how he was implemented. Surprisingly, Black Panther on the other hand is at his best in his debut film than he was was in his own film. Now not trying to discredit Black Panther's film, the development for his character isn't at his best compared to how Civil War treated him, and the suit looks so much better. What Civil War develops for T'Challa's character throughout the film, the Black Panther is a cool guy when he isn't trying to kill you. He's on a vengeful spree until he has the Winter Soldier blood on his claws, since his father was blown up due to the frame explosion by Zemo, putting Bucky as the main suspect for this attack. He is powerful and has utilities and instincts to track Bucky down and isn't held back by other parties involved. A shift in his character, he overhears Zemo being the culprit behind the bombing. He feels the ultimate guilt and feels disappointed within himself that he almost killed the wrong man out of spite. Revenge and guilt is a big part in the story, whether it's Wanda feeling guilt and under house arrest for her powers being far too dangerous in the outside world, but it's nice for Hawkeye being the one to push Wanda. Given an age of Ultron, he's the one that motivated her to go out there and kick a lot of ass. Doesn't matter what you did, what you were, but if you step out that door, you are an Avenger. And she believes she was at fault for Ultron's plan being almost accomplished. Now, Hawkeye feeling the need to motivate Wanda from her house arrest and help Cap during the airport clash, it was a very nice payoff. <laughs> Black Widow siding with Tony despite having a closer connection to Steve and has seen the corruption within the agendas in Winter Soldier and the S.H.I.E.L.D. but sees the damages the Avengers can cause on many innocents. But by the end of it, she sided with Cap and Bucky to stop Zemo from activating the other Soviet super soldiers. There's a difference. Each character plays some sort of role in this story to make sense of the conflict in this narrative. Speaking of achieving a strong conflict. The conflict between Steve and Tony is done beautifully. A major factor in their discrepancies was a large part to their solo films, and Tony's part in Ultron creating the killing machine and good intent to create an armor around the world, but it completely backfired on him. See what solo films can do developing your biggest heroes before you decide to create an understandable big riff? I'm looking at you, BVS. Why did you say that name? Tony is Steve's biggest hurdle in this film. Cap wants to prove Bucky isn't responsible for the bombing, meanwhile Tony doesn't want another Sokovia incident, the death of thousands being painted on his hands. In the opening where he is showcasing his funding presentation at the MIT Alumni Awards, also I love how this scene pretty much fucks up Peter Parker's life. We name my life's work, Barf. He runs into a mother near the elevator, Marion Sharp, who scolds Tony for the Avengers' handling of the Sokovia incident, which resulted in her son, a student of Tony's, being killed. She requests Tony to rethink his views on who the Avengers are. Conveniently enough, 117 countries are tired of the enormous casualties of such carelessness that they have all agreed that the Avengers should be put into government regulation. Without second thinking, seeing a grieving mother at face front, Tony agreed to the demands, arguing they were too busy dropping buildings on innocents while kicking ass, thinking they were saving many lives. Make sustainable housing for the poor guess where Sokovia. We want to make a difference, I suppose. I mean, we won't know because we dropped the building on him while we were kicking ass. This is where the rift really begins as Cap himself thinks differently, as someone who was a government experiment sees the corruption behind such regulations, and they're surrendering the right to choose. If a situation is going south, they can't be there without the approval of the Accords. <laughs> There was a point in this film where Tony boasts about how much he hated Steve growing up, given how much his father adored Captain America during the war. God, I hated you. But despite his frustrations of having a rough childhood due to Cap's likability, he sees how important Rogers is to the Avengers. And Steve is about to sign when Tony mentions the safety of Barnes being treated in a psych ward and not in Ocon prison. But he had to yap about Wanda being in house jail, and Steve immediately retracts his decision to sign the accords, proving his point of being prisoners to the government. Should have kept your mouth shut, Tony. Give me a break! These conflicts emerge as the main vocal point in this film. Now you might be wondering, Tony argued immensely about giving his property towards the government. Knowing what his weapons can cost, but seeing that he's no good as the other guy and viewing the perspective of what civilians have gone through, he is no better than the bad guy. You can't argue 117 countries see the dangers in its own heroes. Majority fucking wins in this case. And for Tony, it's the only step in which keeps the Avengers from breaking into million pieces from his point of view. Steve argues higher powers can be just as corrupted given the events of 
Winter Soldier, and surrounding themselves will only conclude of them losing freedom to choose when and where. Zemo is a very special one in this film, a villain birthed from the consequences of the Sokovia attack. No superpowers, and he's very well aware that he'll get his ass kicked in a fight, but has a very strong will though. Spending years of planning for the destruction of the Avengers, majority of his plan consists of timing and oh boy is his timing on his side. The UN bombing, EMP blast shutting off power, to the perfect timing releasing the doctor's death across the world in which Tony's reeled in to seeing his parents getting punched and choked to death. During his monologue with Black Panther, he explains his actions in thorough detail, a very mere image of Zemo's vengeance consuming him. He was very pissed off at the Avengers for celebrating meanwhile his people and family suffered. He wants revenge and has achieved. He's not powerful but very intelligent to play his cards right and have the Avengers tear each other apart. The airport fight was a good shift but he viewed Bucky as his ace and used him and his image to frame the bombing, having him on the run seeing Steve would support Barnes given their friendship. But the Accords debate wasn't his deal. He infiltrated Hydra officers and used the mission from 1991 where Tony loses his cool and doesn't care if Bucky wasn't Bucky, but saw his parents' blood on the hands of the Winter Soldier. It wasn't him! He killed my mom. Ultimately resulting Cap picking Bucky in this very situation, and Zemo pretty much poisoning the Avengers within, which proves to be a fatal blow given the events in Infinity War. And now it's here, or should I say, I am. Now the film isn't perfect, it has issues. Some of these are head scratchers for like why didn't Vision fire the jet Bucky and Cap are running towards. He had a clear vision, no pun intended, of the direction Cap was headed, and shoot the jet instead of creating a border, this ultimately would have avoided any more damage in the area, and maybe War Machine wouldn't have been paralyzed from the legs. Oh well. I mentioned Spider-Man not for his appearance, but the way the film utilizes his character, which makes you question Tony's decision making. He's merely in the film for a couple minutes to probably kickstart a solo film, but I find it funny how Tony brings a high school kid to a fight amongst other superheroes, who fought worse than robbers and small neighborhood criminals. They possess special abilities, a fight which involves someone with a laser in his head that can damage vibranium, and a witch that mind controls and can't contain her ability sometimes. Tony endangering Spider-Man was not on my bingo card. It's also pretty disingenuous that Tony didn't tell Spider-Man of the conflict he's head into, pretty much blackmails Spider-Man to joining his team. Given what Spider-Man fights for, he would have joined Captain America in this case. Look, when you can do the things that I can, and the bad things happen. Yeah, yeah, just looking out for the little guy. If we sign this, we surrender our right to choose. What? Sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect teeth. Yeah, even with the flaws I have with this film, it's still one of the best MCU projects. It started a two-year surge of nothing but MCU talk, with box office juggernaut after box office juggernaut, and solidified the MCU as a true success. Many franchises are still trying to replicate, and one even had a Civil War attempt, but it failed immensely, causing an endless controversies down the line. Pitting superheroes against one another is done right in Civil War. Although many plot lines are gathered from the comic, the success was behind the character already being established, making the stakes feel much more important to new ones getting their fair share of screen time. Phase 0 will most likely never be taught given the direction MCU is headed, and the other phase is not having much strong films in their arsenal. Anyways, that's it for me, so yeah, see you on the next one guys. I'll be there.